Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another video for you guys from Seth the Programmer. This one talking about Hokage Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha. Now I said I was going to react to this a while back and I'm finally getting to it. So let's go ahead and watch this video. And it's very, very interesting because this is going to be looking at Naruto and Sasuke and their adult forms during the Boruto era. And I do wonder if maybe he's going to make another video, sort of a follow-up to this one, based on some of the recent events in the chapter. And I don't think I'm spoiling this because it's also in the anime, so most people pretty much already know about what happened, which is that Sasuke doesn't have the Rinnegan anymore, and Naruto doesn't have Kurama anymore. Now, if by some chance those two things are just temporary by the time you watch this video, uh, who, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, again, uh, we just we don't know what Kishimoto has planned for the Boruto series moving forward, especially when it comes to the characters of Naruto and Sasuke. But for now, let's just go ahead and focus on this, and we'll go ahead and see what uh, what what Seth thinks about these two put, put up against each other when they are in their adult form. So let's just go ahead. What's up, everyone? Okay. Uh, Seth, the programmer. Today, we're going to be doing Naruto versus Sasuke in their adult states mm -hmm. or versions. So, um, Hokage Naruto versus, you know, Wanderer Sasuke. Um, also, if you like what I do, be sure to subscribe to Daddy Seth. You know, I'll leave a mm -hmm. like on the video. Um, I'd really fucking appreciate it. I, I put it. a lot of work and effort into these videos. I've been researching all this stuff for a long time, and I just feel mm -hmm. like, you know, there aren't it's a lot weird. of credible bigger YouTubers out there, and I deserve a spot at the top, man. Help me out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's got the same humor, but it's kind of weird hearing this considering, yeah, this was like four years ago. So it's weird. I mean, I, we're, I'm so used to seeing some of his more recent videos. It's weird going back and seeing some of his older videos and, you know, you get a sense of just how much he's uh, changed when it comes to like making his, his videos. I don't know if he got a better mic or if he's put more... Or if he started actually scripting his videos, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what Anyways, it is. also, if you guys want a anal uh, more in-depth analysis about like how strong they are and stuff like that, you guys can check out my um, actual Naruto vs. Sasuke uh, breakdowns and analysis. Um, those will be in the description, mm -hmm. and I will put one at the end of the video. I'll put whoever wins this at the end of the video, but... <laughs> Uh, if I were you, I would not uh, go to the comments section before watching this video, uh, simply because you need to hear my explanation. Because I know a lot of people are like, when they hear the result of a battle, they will instantly dislike if it doesn't agree or coincide with their opinion, and they'll like if it goes with their opinion. Hmm. And it's like, you just need to hear my well, arguments I mean, first, man. Keep in mind, I haven't watched the video and I already left a like just to support Seth, so. But anyways, let's get started. So I thought we should do a brief little history lesson uh, before we talk about their final battle. Well, their, not really their final battle, but if they fought as an adult. So, when they fought again in their final battle at the end of Shippuden... You know, I'm not going to lie, I, I do kind of miss this uh, this form of Naruto. I I don't know what it is, maybe it's the uh, QB Chakra mode stacked on top of 6 Fast Sage mode with, you know, the, uh, the normal skin, like his skin doesn't become yellow just like he does with regular KCM or like it does now as an adult. I don't know, just something about this look that just always, uh, to me, always just feels a little cool. Uh, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but... Um, a good, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Naruto is stronger than Sasuke when they first, when they fought at the Final Valley for the second time. Mm. And this is due to the fact that it's way harder to master uh, Sasuke's Renegon than it would be for Naruto to master his Sage powers, simply because Naruto's Sage powers is like not really much different than his normal QB Chakra mode and Sage mode. It's basically the same thing, and the Renegon is like a totally different world. It has different abilities, different things to master. Really, all Naruto had to master was the ability to fly in his True Seeking orbs, but it's like it, he already did. Because one of the abilities of the uh, Sage of Six Paths mode is that you have an unconscious mastery mm -hmm. of flight. It's actually it's stated in the data true. book that you already know how to fly and use most of your abilities. Like, you already mastered your chakra by the time you have the form, which is why uh, Naruto had a huge advantage over Sasuke. 
And it's also uh, pretty obvious that... Also, again, if you didn't see one of my previous videos, I do point out that in this panel, there's an error here made by Kishimoto. Because if you look here, the uh, the Rinnegan that Sasuke has has nine Tomoe, kind of like the Rinne Sharingan that shows up on Mara's forehead when he removes this. And then later on, you see it with Kaguya. When in reality, uh, Sasuke's Rinnegan is only supposed to have six Tomoe, not nine. So this was... I don't know if this was a mistake by uh, Kishimoto or... It's interesting. I don't know if Kishimoto initially planned to actually have Sasuke have the Rene Sharingan, like again, like the one that Kaguya has on her forehead, or if, and then he like changed his mind later and decided to instead make it like its own unique thing that has, that has a similar look, except instead of nine, it has six and isn't exactly the same, and it's still the standard Rinnegan purple that you're used to seeing, except uh, Kaguya's is red, and of course Momoshiki's was. Uh, well, it, it started out purple, but then it turns red every t to, to indicate that he's using it, and then later on when he fused, it became gold. It's 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 very it's interesting because it's never really uh, sort of revealed what the different colors sort of signify. I don't know if it's just for visuals, in order to uh, differentiate them from each other, but eh, I don't know. I, I just I, I always wish that Kishimoto would have sort of like explained exactly what the uh, the colors of the Rinnegan could actually do like maybe gold it gives you like access to different abilities that even the even like the base Rinnegan is purple and you get access to the base abilities that the Rinnegan offers and then if it's red it gives you access to even higher tier abilities and then if it's purple it gives you access to even higher tier abilities than the red one offers you I just I don't know I, I just I always thought it would have been interesting if Kishimoto sort of did something with that other than maybe um or maybe he did, and I just I, I don't know about it. If I'm missing something, let me know about it in the comments. I just I always wish he would have actually done something with it, other than just it being like a, a visual thing to you know differentiate them from each other, so people can tell like, oh, this one belongs to Sasuke, this one belongs to Madara, uh, this one belongs to Momoshiki, this one belongs to Kaguya, and so on and so forth. Oh yeah, Urashiki also had those blue ones, which. Uh, I mean, it had a cool ability, the whole thing, which you, you can rewind time, like, a few seconds. It's just, it does kind of suck it was given to such a trash character. <laughs> oh, man. Had a huge advantage over Sasuke. And it's also uh, pretty obvious that Naruto is also stronger because Sasuke was trying to kill him, like, edging out the whole time, and then Naruto just fucking fisted him the whole time. Well, like, just like, I, I want to be your friend, Sasuke. Again, I've always stated this and i won't go into it too much also it, i don't know if this is an in-between but it's kind of weird how long naruto's fingers are here it's just is it just me or do they do they look a little elongated again i don't know if this is an in-between or if this is a uh, a keyframe but it just looks a little weird sorry again i've talked about this before but to me that's a disingenuous argument that doesn't really prove anything just because sasuke was trying to kill him doesn't and naruto was and doesn't doesn't necessarily mean anything because even if Naruto didn't want to kill Sasuke, it doesn't mean he wasn't actually putting in any effort. I just that whole argument just never held any weight to me, and it's just it, it kills me every time someone tries to use it to defend Naruto. It's like there are other ways, like other arguments that people bring up to defend Naruto, like the fact that he has the uh, the Nine Tails' power. He has uh, like they mentioned Six Path Sage Mode or Six Paths Chakra, which gives him an, an unconscious understanding of chakra which does give him a big advantage, which, okay, yes, that's true. But the whole thing about Sasuke trying to kill him and Naruto doesn't, I'm sorry, that's just, that that means absolutely nothing. It's okay. And he's, like, trying to murder him, and he's just, like, beating him up, right? And then even when Sasuke absorbed ten other tailed beasts, Naruto was still able to counter him, and they still tied, which is why... Yeah, uh, that whole thing, again, I've already talked about it. That, to me, is something that makes no goddamn sense. I think that was a mis to me that that was honestly a mistake by Kishimoto because it's like you have Naruto who has half of Kurama and only a small like small minuscule portion of the other tail beast's chakra and yet you had Sasuke who absorbed absorbed a shit ton of chakra from the tail tailed beast and including the other half of Kurama who has just as much chakra as the half of Kurama that's inside Naruto and to me that just seemed a little bit weird which again uh, makes no goddamn sense now in the anime i will admit it was done a lot better because it showed you just how powerful sasuke was after he absorbed the tail beast by completely just just destroying naruto 
and of course Naruto needing to absorb chakra from you know uh, nature from the earth in order to power up his ability to be able to tie Sasuke that to me honestly made a lot more sense and yeah this is one thing that I, I do criticize Kishimoto for when it comes to how he wrote this fight because yeah that made no goddamn sense and also the whole thing I just want to talk about how some people use the argument of uh, Sasuke uh, not being as strong as Naruto because he's relying on the chakra of the tailed beasts and it's like they forget that Naruto is doing the exact same thing it's like Naruto's relying on uh, the chakra of, Kur uh, of Kurama and of course he has the chakra of the other tail beasts in him which he is using because a combination of all of uh, of all of the the uh, all of the chakra of the tail beasts together gives him access to six path sage mode it's uh, again it's like Naruto's doing the same thing and yet for some reason when Sasuke does it they say Oh, he's relying on it. That means he's not stronger. Okay, well, what about if Sasuke tries to... If Sasuke and Naruto fought each other in their base, like Naruto does, isn't using Kurama, he isn't using the Chakra of the Tailed Beast, it's just him and his base. Sage Mode is is, okay, is an exception. I'm talking regular Sage Mode, not 6 bath Sage Mode, because you need the Chakra of the Tailed Beast in order for that to happen, in order for you to gain access to it. And Sasuke has... Um, and Sasuke only has the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, which is accessible to him because that's a genetic thing that he has it's not something someone gave him even though technically obito is the one who uh, gave him the uh, the eyes but still that's that that is technically something that belongs to him again it's something that he was born with not something he was given like kurama and of course the other chakra from the the other tailed beast and then if they fought together it's like yeah naruto is also relying on the tailed beast so why is it that people always use that argument for Sasuke saying that that proves that he's weaker than Naruto when Naruto's literally doing the exact same thing? Like that to me, I just, I, I've always wondered why people always try to use that against Sasuke when they completely ignore that Naruto's doing the exact same thing, like I said. Sasuke was like, okay, I fucking lost, right? So then you mm, skip ahead. Not, not necessarily. I mean, the reason why he said he lost because he gave up trying to fight Naruto because he realized that Naruto just wasn't going to give up and... Yeah, he eventually just gave up on that. I don't think he actually gave up on the uh, fight in and of itself. A few years, and you go to Naruto the Last, and in Naruto the Last, um, the only difference between their powers is Naruto now has <laughs> is way fucking stronger than Sasuke. I know a lot of guys don't like to admit that, but uh, Sasuke's like wandering around um, trying to like atone for his sins. There's no proof he's really been training. He might be honing his Renegon more, which is shown later in, like, Boruto. But during the the last, he's basically just wandering around, you know, doing small tasks for people, trying to atone for himself. And Naruto is blatantly training on top of having a total nether half of his nine tails. Well, the thing about this is we don't exactly know just how strong Sasuke is during this time because... It's never really expanded on, and I think this is one thing that a lot of people are kind of disappointed with the Naruto series, that if you were going to continue the series, that's that's fine, but it sucks that we never really got to, uh, got to see it, because we never got to see Naruto and Sasuke, especially during this time. I mean, we do have the, uh, the Sasuke Sunrise novel, which does give us a bit of a look into it, into one of Sasuke's um, uh, journeys into the... Uh, you know into his time as a like he said as a wanderer and if you read the book there are examples of him being like incredibly strong and i think the anime actually did adapt that into a, 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 a like a short five episode miniseries which you can go watch if you want and to me personally it's just again what, what sucks is that we don't really know exactly how powerful these two are the only example we do have is the movie which we see uh naruto go up against toneri who was someone who in all honesty didn't really have like yeah he had the tensei gun but the problem is he didn't really have like a uh like he he wasn't used to actually using the ability at all which you would think of being a member of the otsuki clan wouldn't really matter to him but honestly i would say that that's a bit of an inconsistency when it comes to the movie and like i think if i remember correctly correct me if i'm wrong but wasn't it um wasn't it 
Kishimoto, who said in an interview that one thing he kind of regretted about the movie is that Sasuke was barely there. Like, he only made a couple of appearances, and then that's it. And I'm talking about the movie. I don't know if there's a novel out there like there was for the Boruto movie that maybe has more scenes with him in it. Uh, we don't know, but in the movie, he literally makes, like, two appearances. One, I think somewhere in the midway point of the movie where you see, uh, I think it was Hiyashi Yuga. He was on his way back to the village, and he passes out and then honestly this is i would say this is again kind of a coincidence and a fault of the movie is that he just coincidentally happens to pass out where sasuke just happens to be within the vicinity and he was able to find him and take him back to the leaf village and then later on we saw like a meteor falling down which would have destroyed the uh, village and then sasuke just takes it out like it's nothing well, te and, and again, technically it was half of a, a, a meteor, but still, I mean, if you saw the size of it, it would have definitely destroyed the village. And Sasuke just uses one Chidori and just blows it away like it's nothing. So you could use that as an, ex as an example of just how strong he's gotten, that his Chidori went from, like, just stabbing someone to being able to blow away half, to, and not even blow away, just completely eviscerate, like, half of a meteor half of that which is insane and honestly that's the only example that we have and presumably he did go on to basically do the same for multiple meteors that could have fell on the leaf village because he said that since naruto was in here uh it's my job to now protect the village and he just goes on to again presumably do the exact same thing to any other meteors that are possibly falling on the leaf village i don't know if he did the same for others again we don't know in all honesty, the only examples that sort of explain just how strong he is is if you look at the uh, the Storm games, like the uh, Storm 4 where you had Sasuke and some of the things that he could do. Again, that's the only thing that we have. We don't have any other examples of Sasuke and just how strong he is during this time. Now, the whole thing about him like not really training, I don't really think that's the case because... Again, it is proven that during the uh, the uh, the 16 years between the ending of the Naruto series and then the beginning of the Boruto series, it's proven that they have gotten a lot stronger. So, And Kishimoto did say that both Naruto and Sasuke at that time are pretty much equal when it comes to power. So he couldn't have gotten there if he wasn't training. And remember, this is Naruto with Kurama. And Sasuke doesn't, Sasuke doesn't have a tailed beast or any of that. Which is, again, I, I feel like... He couldn't have gotten there if he wasn't training. So yeah, the only difference in this battle, because Naruto's still training, is that Naruto has so an entire another nine tails half, and Sasuke's basically the fucking same. So in the last, no, Naruto was curb stomping with absolutely no difficulty. Um, mm, and yes, it is shown that Naruto does train in the last as well. So yeah, basically just Naruto does plus he? nine tails. Because I remember watching the movie. And he wasn't really training. He was sort of... Um, well, I mean, we do see some examples of him, you know, during fights that he... Uh, what is it? That he does show abilities that we never, we've never, we never seen him use before. So, yes, obviously he did get stronger. But, again, you could say the same thing for Sasuke. I think saying that he wasn't training is kind of disingenuous because there's no real evidence that says he wasn't training. Plus, extra years of training equals the last... And then you could argue Sasuke plus training equals the last. So it's like they're basically the same, except Naruto has a whole nother nine tails on top of both of them training. So it's pretty clear that Naruto is stronger in this scenario. I know a lot of people like to think that uh, he doesn't have his six pass mode anymore. Uh, this is mainly due to the fact that uh, he doesn't use it in the show but it's shown that he uses it as an adult so he clearly does have it still right and he's well yeah he does have it he didn't use it in the movie but he does have it and also it is important to note that uh naruto doesn't have this form in particular i know it's a little bit confusing but naruto doesn't have this but he does still have access to six bath sage mode he does have access to that he does he just doesn't have access to the uh six bath senjutsu that he got from Hagoromo because he used that up, but he does have access to six paths sage mode. Again, it's a little confusing, but look it up. You'll 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 know what I mean. I'm sure there are videos on this platform that pretty much explain exactly what's going on. And I'm talking about six paths and jutsu that allow him to utilize this form, you know, with the truth seeking orbs and the understanding of all things chakra. 
as opposed to six past sage mode which just allows him to utilize the chakra of the tailed beast that he has inside him that's what six past sage mode is which gives him that boost uh, uh, of a boost in power which is signified by uh, the eyes that you can see right here and you can see there's no pigmentation around the eyes which means this isn't the regular sage mode that he used this is six path sage mode and uh, this only this he only had access to this and the understanding of all things chakra and the creation of all things is because he has he had the chakra from uh, Hagoro Motsuki which he used up after the ending of the war he doesn't have that anymore but he does have still have access to this and I think that that explains why he doesn't have access to the truth seeking orbs and the creation of all things and the understanding of all things chakra still a rival to Sasuke's Renegon so he does have to have it um a lot of people think he doesn't have it mainly because uh, he doesn't have the truth seeking orbs anymore but the thing about the truth seeking orbs is that you need all the chakra natures to make it and even when he did have the six paths mode he couldn't regenerate them good example of this is after the fight with kaguya he only had like three left i think and even um yeah he only had three left and when he reactivated his six paths mode he still only had three so even when he blatantly had the six paths mode they didn't regenerate mm -hmm. so when he's an adult they still want it regenerate they're pretty much just like a one time only kind of thing and it's but also concluded in the games really as well i don't know sense. if you guys like games but uh in the games it is concluded that yes adult naruto still has a six paths mode and all of like a little sliver of all the bijou's chakras still which is shown with his ross and shuriken barrages and shit what a lot of people don't know is about when they're adults is that both naruto and sasuke are a lot stronger when they're actually adults mm -hmm. than they are in the last. Um, this is due to there actually being a massive time skip before Naruto becomes Hokage. Like, if you look at it, Boruto's born, and he's, like, able to run around. Himawari's also born. So it's, like, many years later, and he's still not Hokage yet. Which means that he was basically training until adulthood. So he is a lot stronger. So, again, I know this has nothing to do with the video, but I just want to say this real quick. I am not a fan of this chapter. Not a fan of this chapter at all, because, you know, we have been waiting for years to see Naruto become the Hokage. And then when it finally happens, it's not even Naruto. Like, it, it just sucks. And yet, this also, this whole thing is stupid and makes no sense. Because it's like, he can clearly see she's got the Byakugan... Even before he stepped in front of Boruto to stop her. And yet you're telling me he wasn't... Naruto Uzumaki isn't fast enough to stop her attack. At this point, he isn't fast enough to just grab her hand right before she hits him. Yeah, no, no, this is stupid. Everything about this is stupid. I get that they were going for the comedic, like, oh, look what happened. It's not funny. It's not funny. You took the moment that we've been waiting to see and you treated it as a joke. I, I, again, I hate this chapter. I Stronger than he was in the last and when the war arc. Um, a lot of people get this misconception that he's a lot weaker because he got rusty. But it's like, sure, he's rusty, but he's rusty compared to his prime adult self. Not rusty compared to how he was in like the war arc or in the last. Because he's been training like a fucking decade since then. So he's like a decade more training on top of that. Um... So does Sasuke as well. Uh, good proof that Sasuke uh, did train is that he's like swapping dimensions now. So like if he fought Kagi, he'd be able to switch dimensions on her. And he just seems to have a lot more abilities. And he also probably mastered his Renegon more, being able to like absorb energy and attack Which at the he same time. Like never uses. Suggesting. So um, another thing that you guys need to know about Naruto versus Sasuke as well is that even if Naruto did get rusty from his prime adult version, that the gap between the last naruto and sasuke is huge right literally they were the same they're about the same level and then naruto just gets another nine tails so it's like he just became a nine tail stronger than sasuke and then it's Didn't like okay so, Nar the so they're training equally actually sasuke might be more lenient with his training because he's just kind of wandering around meeting people mm, while naruto is actually blatantly training so you have Naruto, Again, we don't know who's that. actually That's been kind of training, has a training regiment where Sasuke's kind of wandering and maybe training here and there. Uh, Naruto then has a whole nother nine tails, and then he gets rusty from that. But it's like, can Sasuke grow a whole nother nine tails stronger in like a few months or like a year? And it's like, uh, that's, that's debatable, man.
But let's just say, uh, and then I mean, if you look at the battle with Momofuki, this is also shown because Naruto has to save Sasuke's life in both the anime and the manga. Well, not the anime, but the movie and the manga. Sasuke has is like it's almost killed by Momofuki, and Naruto has to save his life. So, like, well, let's just say that. Well, the thing is that again. That's something that I, I didn't like about the fight because it doesn't really make a lot of sense because he got... Okay, so in the movie, again, it happens differently than in the uh, the manga or the anime. In the manga and in, in the anime, he gets trapped by that uh, whole wood dragon thing that Momoshiki summons. Well, no, it wasn't a dragon. I think it was a dog because he says for the ability, it's called uh, Inu. And I think Inu in Japanese translates to dog. Again, I, I could be wrong on that. I Trust me, I don't know Japanese. I... This is just something that I remember looking up once. And correct me if I'm wrong. And he gets trapped by that uh, wood dog thing, which in all honesty didn't make a lot of sense because Sasuke could have just like used a small almighty push and just blown it away or just cut it out with his, uh, with his sword. I don't know why he was just letting himself get slammed to the ground by that thing and then nearly get blown up by that technique that Moshiki used, which, whose name I'm forgetting at this moment. Where he likes contains a ex small explosion, in the uh, in inside the that uh, the wood dog thing, and then he was just slowly uh, uh, sending it towards uh, Sasuke's direction. Uh, yeah, that uh, that makes no goddamn sense. And also, uh, the whole thing about this is that uh, uh, this is this is actually a fan translation. And while I won't downplay fan translation, I'm not one of those people. Uh, in the uh, in the Viz translation, which I'll admit is uh, is sometimes a little bit more accurate, uh, Naruto here says uh, is is asking you wait so your power eye powers were weakened and then he's he says basically uh, he doesn't ask like how did that happen he asks he basically says give me a break, and basically it's showing that he doesn't believe that all this time he spent with Sasuke while they were traveling through this uh, mission thing they were on. He didn't really believe that Sasuke's eyes were like weakened at all, or that the power of his dojutsu was weakened at all. And now Sasuke's telling him, no, it was. So if anything, that should probably tell you just how strong Sasuke has gotten up until this point, to, the, to where even Naruto looked at a weaker version of Sasuke and didn't really believe that he was weak at all. A until Sasuke blatantly told him that, no, no, like I... I a lot of my chakra was used up because, and again, let me clarify this, because a lot of people seem to have this misconception of Sasuke, the reason why he doesn't use the Rinnegan's abilities, and I'm talking about the base Rinnegan abilities that we saw Nagato use, is that it uses up a lot of chakra, when in reality, that's not the case. Sasuke specifies, even here, even in the fan translation, and the same thing in the Viz translation, that it's investigating Kaguya's dimension as in opening a portal to that dimension and then opening a portal back and then using space-time ninjutsu in and of itself, that's what uses up a lot of chakra. The Amino Tejikara, the ability that allows him to switch places with uh, other objects, and the th same thing for his opponents, although it, I, I wonder whether or not he actually has that ability again or if it's another ability the writers conveniently forgot Sasuke had. That's what uses up a lot of chakra. Abilities like Chibaku Tensei, Bansho Tenin, Shinra Tensei, the Preda Path, the Animal Path, the Human Path, all of those abilities, the Life Path, none of those abilities drain a lot of chakra. Again, if you just go back and look at the war, uh, or Sasuke during the war arc, we're talking about a guy who cast nine planetary devastations, nine Chibaku Tenseis that trapped all of the tailed beasts like it was nothing. All he did was clap his hand and boom, you're all trapped. And before that, he even used a little bit to cat, put the, all the nine-tailed beasts under his control. And then later on, uses some of it to basically absorb the chakra of the tailed beasts. And then in the anime, and again, this was anime only, but he used the uh, Bansho Tenin against Naruto. And then later on, he uses the Preda Path to absorb chakra from Naruto and use it his own. and Or, excuse me, make it his own. It's, again, I, I hate that people even have this misconception. It's like a lot of people actually forgot what happened it, it's like they it's like they never read the manga at all and is, are just listening to what some people are saying on the uh on on, on the internet who themselves have either forgotten or completely uh uh or or it's been a while since they've uh, read the manga or they just completely misremember what happened at uh let's just be generous 
let's say that okay sasuke is stronger than naruto right let's say that let's say that sasuke somehow became stronger than a nine tails in like a few months or whatever okay um so the problem is is that maybe sasuke would be stronger than naruto or whatever the fuck right but there's one thing that naruto can still do that sasuke really relied on in their first battle that he can no longer do and that is sasuke can't absorb the ten tails like he did or all the tailed beasts like he did in their uh, the final battle in the final valley but naruto can still well, use his yes. giant six paz ross and shuriken and absorb energy all throughout the planet to counter that power so it goes down to show if naruto was serious like he pulled the hashirama versus moderate he's like nobody will hurt my village you know <laughs> uh then he would in fact without like that, that six paz ross maybe, and maybe shuriken had a, had clone himself problem, maybe five thousand times because yes he can clone himself literally five thousand times at least two thousand that's confirmed so he might be able to clone himself thousands of times, gather up nature energy. I never understood why they had the text on the uh, page like this. But like, why is it sideways? I mean, I get they can't do it uh, horizontally because it would, because you know it would probably cover up the panel. But still, this is a little confusing because you have to actually turn your head in order to read it, which is mm. G and whip out a six pass Ross and Shuriken, and Sasuke would get one shotted mm. without difficulty. I mean. I could see Sasuke maybe, like, teleporting dimensions, possibly, to survive the attack. But I don't think Naruto would also have to go all out. Here's an example. like, So Naruto used all his uh, six paths, giant Ross and Shuriken energy because he was countering Sasuke when he had the ten-tailed beast absorbed. But then it's like, Sasuke doesn't have that power, so Naruto wouldn't have to do that, right? So Naruto, in this case, would be stronger than Sasuke. However, it is possible that Sasuke could beat Naruto, and a few examples are um, Naruto, well, Sasuke can teleport, uh, Sasuke can also steal energy while simultaneously attacking, mm -hmm. so if Sasuke did manage to steal some of Naruto's energy, he could pull off a win, but for now, I'm going to go with Naruto being stronger than Sasuke. Um, you can't really use the Boruto movie as a good example of the two. I know some people were like, well, in this battle, uh, Sasuke took the lead in their little combination clash. It's like, okay, that's a combination attack. It doesn't mean one person's stronger than the other. Mm -hmm. And you also true. need to realize we don't know who had less energy. We don't know if how much energy Momo stole from Naruto. He could have stole a shit ton, right? Well, he could have stole more I than think, it took for Sasuke to teleport there. I think it was kind of clarified that he took like half of the Nine Tails' chakra, so Naruto only had half of it. And Sasuke did kind of confirm that uh, that that teleporting people does use up teleporting himself alone uses up a ton of chakra teleporting other people with him uses up even more and he teleported the the, the other five kage so that's four people including borto and then unintentionally teleported katasuke and then his assistant so that's seven people not including himself so sasuke was severely drained of chakra in that fight and yet he still went on to basically helped Maliwa, Momoshiki, fused Momoshiki, and, uh, few, yeah, it was, it was a fused Momoshiki, and it's, and he still had enough chakra left to help Boruto with, with his plan to, uh, with his plan to basically, uh, you know, take out Momoshiki, both in the manga and in the anime, and then, of course, in the movie as well. I will say, I did like the uh, the manga and the anime version better than the, uh, the movie version, if I'm being honest. Because in the movie version, he didn't really do much, if I'm being honest. At least, I mean, I'm talking about the uh, the plan to basically stab out Momoshiki's eye to stop him from, uh, you know, absor absorbing chakra. And, uh, what is it? And... And then, of course, helping uh, Boruto to land the Rasengan to destroy him, which was given to him by, by Naruto. Which is, again, again, people sometimes, I think, downplay just how strong Naruto and Sasuke were in that fight. Like, they, the writers had to severely, and I mean severely, drain them of chakra in order for the fight to happen. Because, again, I would imagine full power Naruto and Sasuke versus Fuse Momoshiki wouldn't even be a fight based on what was told to us from that fight alone, Naruto and Sasuke severely drained 
again, Naruto had half of Kurama gone. And Sasuke severely drained of Chakra by teleporting himself and a bunch of other people to that dimension. And yet they still together managed to mollywop a fused Momoshiki. So I would imagine how a full power Naruto and Sasuke would do against Fuse Momoshiki. I don't think it would be a fight, if I'm being honest. I don't think, like, yeah, Momoshiki would put up a fight, and his ability to absorb ninjutsu would still prove to be a problem, but maybe not that much of a problem because they were still able to figure out a strategy against him. So the movie's not really a good gauge. What you need to do is you need to go with scaling, and if you're going with scaling, Naruto wins. Okay, that's just the bottom line. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something, I mean, and till next time. Again, see, the thing is that when it comes to... Again, this is the whole thing that's so, so confusing about Naruto against uh, Sasuke is that we um, we don't really have good examples. Like, and I, well, Again, the only thing we really do have is the whole Momoshiki and Fuse Momoshiki thing in the movie. And even that doesn't really tell us much. And only, all we can go off is just a lot of headcanon because... Again, think about it like this. Kishimoto said that at this point, Naruto and Sasuke are pretty much equal when it comes to power, right? And Sasuke at this point has all the hacks of the Rinnegan, which are pretty hacks when you think about it. And Naruto, of course, has the chakra over the other tailed beast, and he can still use the whole tailed beast Ross and Shuriken, uh, that thing that he used against, uh, against Sasuke in their final clash. And even if Sasuke can't use that uh, that version of the Susana where he absorbed the ten, uh, the the nine tail beast's chakra and then fused it into his Susana, even if he can't use that, you could say he doesn't necessarily need that anymore because you could say that at this point he's stronger than he was back then, even with the tail beast's chakra. Because if he wasn't, then he wouldn't be able to put up a fight against Naruto at all. But he is, and he could. Now, again, I think a lot of people would agree that Naruto, in terms of, let's say, raw destructive power, does beat Sasuke. But at the same time, as it's been kind of established in the Naruto series, that it doesn't matter sometimes whether you have more chakra or more destructive power than, uh, than, than let's say, the, your opponent. Sometimes it all comes down to strategy. And I would imagine that Sasuke now... Having all of the abilities that he has, not just with the Renegon, but also with his Sharingan, his EMS, and of course his base being already incredibly strong. And I think the one thing that might give Sasuke the edge is his insane intellect. Again, it's been even been referenced by multiple other characters in the Borzo series. Even Jigen and Ishiki have constantly noted how out of the two... Sasuke is considered the most dangerous because of his intellect and because of that level-headedness of his. And I feel like going into a fight that might give Sasuke the bigger advantage. Now, again, it's... You know what? I'm going to leave it up to you. Knowing what we know... Oh, and by the way, keep Baryon Mode out of it because Baryon Mode doesn't count because that was a one-time thing and Naruto only used it in order to... Uh, you know, in order to help with the fight against Ishiki. I think we can assume he's not going to use that in this fight. And even if he did, I think it's a clear answer as to who would win. Like, Barrio Mode is insane. So, keeping that out of it, between the two, based on what we know, and also keep any plot convenient excuses of Sasuke constantly being out of chakra and all that stuff, keep that out of it, full-powered Naruto versus Sasuke, and keep in mind, remember what I said, don't just take the whole Naruto having the nine tails, so, more, so a lot of chakra and destructive power... Yes, that is a factor, but keep in mind, other than that, take every single variable into this fight. Take all of it, put it against the two. Who do you think would realistically win? And please, just for the sake of this, keep your own personal bias out of it. Really, really think about it L logically. Who would win? Okay, without any plot armor, without any plot contrivances, who would actually win? I'll, I'll ask I'll, I'll leave the question to you guys so with that being said thank you so much leave a like not just to this video but also go watch Seth's video support it uh, talk about it in the comments I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to the next one bye for now